Okay, so we're talking about Chalk Dust Torture tonight by Fish, and it's a it's an old favorite, and I hope I hope that you're able to enjoy this song as much as as uh, I have in the past, and and I guess many others have in the past. And if you're watching tonight, welcome to our Wednesday night live stream at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Play guitar with uh, Jason Carey, I guess, and uh, I just wanted to welcome you and thank you very much for taking the time to play your guitar. Today we'll just got to make sure that we're all in tune with one another. So we'll start with low open E. We'll get going right away. And A. Uh, how are we doing? Are we all in tune? Are we in tune? We have a couple watching right now. And if you have friends who are interested in uh, the group Fish, uh, get them on the horn and let's all play this tune together tonight. G. B. And high E string. Now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the chords that belong to this song. So this song starts with E, and there's a really cool lick that, that precedes that. So we're starting on fret number three. It's kind of a little, it's a little blues lick. And so I guess the, the group's kind of uh, really famous for blurring the lines between genres and taking different genre genres of music and sort of blending them together and it's a really f fun and sometimes very exciting uh, experience so we're looking at that little blues lick right here because we're on fret number three if we wanted it to be a country lick we would probably play it on fret number two right but got that nice pull off so what we're going to do if we haven't done pull offs yet be together we're going to pluck the string on fret number three on the low E string and then literally like pluck the string with the second finger it should feel as if the string is sliding out from underneath your fingertip we don't want to pull on it so much that we drag the string with us but we just want to have the string slide out from underneath your fingertip. We do that twice in a row, and we pluck both times. And then we move down to the E chord after that. We pluck the open low E string, and then, and we're using sort of a modified, uh, I'm not sure, I forget sort of what the recording does, but for years I've been playing it like this. I played this on uh, W, um, uh, it's a really cool radio station in, uh, in Massachusetts, in Cambridge area. Maybe some of you have heard of that radio station at MIT. Wicked cool, great stuff, loads of talent and skill on that station. So uh, I would highly recommend you check them out. So I did play this tune down there once upon a time. And... We've got that first finger, sort of like not that E, the old E chord that we all knew and loved so well. It's that E chord minus the third finger, and then we're going to actually lay that second finger over the D string. And what we could do to give it that studio recording sound, that first finger hammers on to fret number one on the G string, like that, okay? All right, I think we do this pull off twice, then we play the open low E string, and then there's that really quick, and then an up that really quick E chord with a hammer on to fret number one, that slur between E minor and E major, and then an upstroke on the same chord. stroke on the A so it would be counted like this three and four and one two 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 three and four and one Beaten worker, 
what we end up doing during the verse, <coughs> pardon me, is we hang on to that A chord, bend the berserker, and then we end up going back to the E chord, that riff. Instead of going back and forth to that old sort of bluesy lick or riff, for the chorus we start in pre-chorus we start to change it up a little bit. We go to G and then A and then G and back to E. The second time around G and we stay on I guess G and A. All right. to sort of over the years uh, this tune and other tunes like this have sort of gone through a little metamorphosis and you can add your own sort of flavors to, to songs like this especially where there's an A chord that just sort of hangs on and on and on during the verse section. So you could actually use a um, like this modal because there's a G chord in the song and that this is that flavor that mix a mixolydian flavor in the song you could actually use uh, a G chord shape which is that three two one diagonal pattern starting on the D G and the B strings frets five four and three and then we move G in the musical alphabet goes up one whole step to a and then we move up another we change the shape and we switch these two fingers around and we have another G and then we move up a whole step to A and then we're headed back to E. Okay, you can do that kind of thing. Here's another way well, we'll get right to this. There should be, I think we have queued up. There's a, there's a song that I wrote. We're just going to take a quick breather here, do a quick stretch. I don't know if you guys, my in-person guitar lesson, guitar students and guitar friendlies um, suffer themselves to be uh, put through a stretching regimen. Every 10 or 15 minutes we play, we usually start with a stretching exercise. And we do this sort of like straight elbow junior high school calisthenic, you know, it's a really basic thing to do, but it's really important that we don't, you know, we don't want to pull any tendons apart here or any tissue. We don't want to damage any tissue, but it's really important that we take the time to breathe and stretch out on the guitar. If we don't do that, we could end up with some problems, some workplace, some workplace damage. So, while I'm stretching and while we stretch, why don't we take a quick look at a song I wrote for, um, it's, it's called A Song for Eugene. It's about some law enforcement. I think that's going to come right up on your screen. And I think you could find it on the iTunes store. You can find it all over the internet. But it's a really cool song, and it talks a little bit about, you know, those who help to maintain society and you know the hard work that they do um, to protect that line 
between civilization and chaos and stuff. And uh, do we have that link? Yeah? Oh, there it is. Okay. So if you wanted to download that, that'd be great. You, I'm sure that you'll love the recording. That was done here in Belgrade, Maine. And so it's a main grown, homegrown kind of uh, sound, and hope you enjoy it. So we're still stretching. So we did the up motion. Now what we need to do is reciprocate that. We need to, we should, we don't need to do anything. It's guitar, you do whatever you want. But I like to stretch because once I take a break and stretch, all of the programming that I've done for that muscle tissue sort of, I guess we keep learning while we stretch and we're stretching because we care for ourselves and we become better guitar players when we care for ourselves. Don't we? Yeah, that's right. All right, so here we go back to the song. So we have that nice... riff between um, E and A. All right, so there's another way. You know how we started talking about ways to expand on that A chord during the verse. We could also expand on that A chord just by kind of... Just by kind of hanging out here. If you don't want to jump all over the guitar neck, um, you don't have to. So one, some night you may feel like you just want to hang out here in the second position, and that's fine too. You could actually just kind of extend that fourth finger like you were playing the, you know, that that blues. Right. So you know that riff, and you remember how we used to get that fourth finger involved in fret five. Okay, so we've got that nice blues flavor. That fourth finger on the A chord during the verse section where we're expanding on the A chord could just be, you know, holding that A chord down and add that fourth finger to where we normally would play it in the, you know, that sort of like 12 bar blues feel. So let me give you a, a sample. kicking guitar solo in this song, right? If you were going to solo over this song, any ideas about what you'd use for a scale? I, I would go ahead and use the E minor pentatonic scale. That's right. That's just what I was thinking. You could use fret 3 on the high E string, fret 3 on the B string, open high E, open B. Fret 2 on the G, open G, fret 2 on the D, open D. Oh, yeah, so fret 2 on the A, and open A, and fret 3 on the low E, and open E. Oh, yeah, and occasionally you might want to slur back from fret 3 to 2.
So you could also use fret 12. While we're talking about that, we also have a Facebook page that we're promoting at this time where you can go and learn a little bit more about uh, our songwriting process and listen to some of our other songwriting and interact with a different sort of uh, thread and just sort of um, just become aware of that. So it's a, uh, I think what we're going to do is give that a slightly different flavor than what we're doing here. So just to be aware of it, I think it's called uh, Jason Carey Logic, I think is the, uh, how you could, yeah, it's at facebook.com forward slash Jason Carey Logic, or you can just find me at, at Jason Carey Logic. So it's a good one, it's a lot of fun. that nice that minor pentatonic shape on position number 12 so let's just walk through that again it's a very common shape and it's well used and well loved by many rock guitar players that came down there have been coming down through this uh, American um, thread of music okay so Open uh, fret 12 on the low E string, fret 15 on the E, so it's 1, 4, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 4, okay? I can't think of a much um, a much better song to learn how to, to sort of like solo guitar over, because when you're doing this... It's a really fun. It's a really fun song and a really fun groove to follow, and you can learn a little bit more about what we're doing in contact. You know, and stay in direct contact with us at jasonjcarry.com too, which is our website, which we're always working to, uh, you know, to include in this whole this whole business of things, this whole guitar business of things. So we have, just a review, we have this nice... Can we have a picture of that website? I think we might. So we have that nice pull off, which we'll do a couple of times, and then go directly to, low e, to the E chord. And then, but we have that first finger hammering on to fret number one on the G string. And then A. And then G, and then A, and then G, and then E. And then G, and then A, and then G, A.
so you can have a ton of fun with this. Do you have any questions? Are there any questions out there? We've got a couple. We've got a couple of viewers. We'll keep going. We're going to keep working on this thing. Get this thing pumped right up. And we're, I suppose, if we can get a pile of viewers on here. I think once we reach a thousand, we've got a we've got a little giveaway lined up. So uh, once we reach a thousand subscribers, so go ahead and like, share, subscribe. Uh, it really helps us out, and we certainly appreciate it. And it helps to us to continue promoting good quality content. And don't hesitate to chat us up. We do have a moderator. I'd like to thank Catherine tonight for being our moderator. Thank you, Catherine. And also, uh, we'll answer any questions that you have in as close to re uh, real time as possible. And let's see, what else do we have? Every Wednesday night. At 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have these set up. So if you have requests and you'd like to see a certain song played uh, or reviewed, um, you always wanted to learn something and really get right down into the into the weeds in this is one of these songs. Um, let's do it. So until then, happy picking and thanks for watching. Play guitar now. Synapses burn. The torture of chalk dust collects in my tongue. Thoughts follow my vision and dance in the sun. All my vasoconstrictors constrictors, they come slowly undone. If this weight's a long move, can I live while I'm young? Can I live while I'm young? Can I live while I'm young? Can I live while I'm young?